Okay, so now we are going into our consolidated patron notes section of this training. Um, as an overview, um, you can find the consolidated patron notes in the patron record under notes, um, where before the notes, alerts, blocks, messages were all kind of spread out throughout the patron record, you'll now see them all displayed under one tab. Um, which makes things a little bit easier to manage. Um, so you'll create, edit, and archive all of these notes from uh, one interface, and you'll be able to scope them to a specific branch to your library system or to all of Spark. Um, your public, your patron visible or public notes will show in um, in the OPAC under my account in the message center, and we'll show you that as well. Um, you can also see uh, patron visible notes under the patron record and the other tab in the message center. So there are a few ways to, to view these notes um, and the different types of notes. So going into a patron account, you'll be able to see uh, the number of notes that are active before you even click into the tab. So you'll see there are three active notes on this account. Up here, you have the active notes, and down here, you have archived notes. Um, and you'll see, too, that you can view past years or months of archive notes. You can choose with this date picker um, if you want to see older archive notes, but it does default to the last year of archive notes. Um, and once you've archived a note and it's down here, there's nothing you can do to it. There's no editing it. Um, you can't delete it. So that's something to remember. Um, okay, so if we want to add any type of note, which uh, note in this case is sort of a blanket term for notes, alerts, and blocks, um, so to create any one of those things, you'll click on create note. Um, so a note is, uh, that is not visible over here on the left-hand side. So um, it might be something like Scranton uses, uh, uses this section to um, for their ILLs. So they might put the ILL title. Um, and then sign off. And um, I forgot to mention that the the yellow boxes are the required um, is the required information that you need, the the minimum information you need for any um, any note or alert. Um, and if you want to make it patron visible and have it show up in their um, message in their message center in their my account. Um, you'll just click this box and you can see um, if you go into this note later to edit it, you'll be able to see if they've read it or if they have not read it. Um, so this will show up in Katie's my account. So let's go in and see what that looks like. So when they log in, and they go to messages, <laughs> they'll be able to see um, the note that we just created. Um, it's from our Nugget Davis Memorial Free Friendly Library, which is our demo library. Um, and they'll be able to see this subject that we created, this note. Um, and they can then do whatever they want. They can delete it, they can keep it unread. Um, and if we come back here and we edit, we can see what time they read it, which is, is very useful. Um, once they've read the note, um, you, you can delete it from this interface, from the staff interface, but it will stay uh, in their in their patron account. If they haven't read it yet, you can delete it and it will be removed from their message list. 
Can I say one thing before I go? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, at, at Scranton, we do like these, like you said, the ILL, the title. Um, mm-hmm. And some of our staff put like DVD or like CD first. I would tell mm-hmm. people to put the title first if you want, when you put in an order by yes. title and you want to see the title, because if not, the DVD or CD is going to be first. So right. been, I put that in the email, sent to the, the new Spark ILL thing. Yes. Um, but this first, for everybody to know, if you put DVD first, that title won't title you're looking for won't come up first you have to put the title the the title then it was the dvd or a book or talking book or whatever it is format right and so that's a little helpful hint for everybody and then i did put um you can put control f if you're have when our patron has like over 200 for each page you can still look Mm -hmm. up the title like that control f and you can still find that title even if it does say dvd first or cd or whatever first so yes that's super helpful yeah thank you so um any information that's displayed on the screen you can control f so if you need to add like additional columns that you want to be able to search on the page you can do that um here and you can also add more rows but again if there's like like tessa was saying if there's more than 100 rows um you may, you're going to want to be able to sort. Um, and the easiest way to do that would be to put the title first, because we realized last time that you can click on title to sort by that field. Um, it will put the, uh, it will, it will separate the capitalized um, titles versus the like lowercase titles. So you'll see that it's an order um, with the capital letters uh, titles first, and then you'll have this lowercase hello. I lost um, internet. Have you yeah. asked what the ladies just said? And Caleb just came from the page computers and said the same. We had that. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so another thing um, to note is um, again that the initials on these notes are um, required. That's a library setting. So if you go into your notes and you find that that's not required, just let us know if you if you want it to be. Um, you know, I think a lot of libraries want that, you know, ability to see who added a note so that they can then go to that person and ask questions, etc. cetera. Um, the other way that you can see who created a note is that depending on whatever account you're signed in with so um you you can see that i'm logged in as pales Donnell, and this note that i just created you can see that the staff member is pales Donnell. so my my initials are here but it's also that staff account um and you can then see when the note was created um what location it was created at and you have here the what time the, um, because it's a patron visible note, you can see what time the patron read it. So you don't even have to go into the note um, to see that they've read it. All right, so, okay. So a silent note are these notes here that are just kind of stored here um, in the notes tab, in these active notes tab. An alert will show up here um, in red. And you can see, I think, I think the reason I'm not seeing this one, if I'm not mistaken, oh, maybe it's the location, because I'm not logged in as uh, at um at Blair County. I can't see this alert, so, um, so I think that's why. But I can make an alert that's visible um, through all of Spark if I want. I can make it visible at my um, system level, um, or I can make it visible just in my building. So an, an alert might be used. I mean, there's a lot of different use cases it might be used for um, to let other staff know of you know some unwanted behavior or um, to let other staff know that if they come across this account, to let the patron know that they left their ID at the circulation desk, um, and that will then show up 
over oops, over here. Um, and that way it's visible. Um, it's visible as soon as you as you come into the um, the record. So even if I'm in the checkout um, interface, I can still see this alert here. So that is, um, it's just a little bit more obvious that that, that that alert is there. So there's really no difference between alert and note other than where it's displayed on the patron record. Okay, so any any of these active notes, I can come in at any time and edit them. Um, we found out last time, let me show you. Um, so I'm gonna go into this alert. I'm able to change it from an alert to a note easily um, once I give it all the required information. So it'll take it away uh, from the alert and just keep it here as a as a silent note. So we learned that if you did use this for ILL, for example, that you could enter it as a silent note and then um, change it into an alert if you wanted to like alert another staff member um, that it was available for the patron. And then you could also um, change it into a patron visible note so that they would then be able to see it in their message center and you could communicate with them that way. So those are notes and, and alerts. Um, there's also blocks. So blocks are, um, they're a way, this is a manual block. So it's a manual way to, uh, to prevent certain actions from being taken using the using this account. So um, this block will not allow the patron to circulate, put holds, or um, renew items. Um, and you can just say, you know, you might want to say, uh, you know, on on or no, inappropriate behavior, let's say. And I want to put a block. So as long as this block remains, this account will not be able to, to do any of those things that I mentioned. Um, if you do check out an item, um, it is, you can manually override a block. So it's not completely like, the end of any action that the that you could take with the account. Um, if it's still on there, you can override it. Um, and we also got a question last time about the difference between a block and and being barred. Um, barred is a, a checkbox right here that you can check. Um, we learned that you can override a, a barred um, account as well. So a it's sort of, it's very similar, but in this instance, you can, with the manual block, you can kind of describe more of what, what's going on and why the block is there. Um, some, some libraries have used the block. Uh, if, if a patient calls and says, I lost my library card, they'll put a manual block on the account so that nobody else can use it until they come in and get a new card and then they'll remove the block. Um, so these are just some of the different ways use, um, that you can use blocks. If you want to add um, additional types of blocks, like if you only wanted um, a manual block on placing holds, for example, um, you can, we, can we can do that for you in the library settings. Um, we can add that in the, that's in the local administration in the penalty types. Um, so we can add different types if you want to have blocks. Um, let me just make said anything. Let me see. Um, if you click on remove note, that is that just deletes it entirely. Um, so it's just gone. It's not archived. You won't be able to see any record of it. 
Um, so if there's anything that you want to keep like for posterity, you'll want to archive it. And then it will show up um, here in your archive notes. Thank you for deleting the one that said I was inappropriate. So, <laughs> uh, she's no, you're very appropriate. Um, okay. And again, uh, once they're archived, they cannot be deleted. Um, and then if they're archived, but they're patron visible and they've been read, they can still be seen in the patron account. Uh, right. So another thing, another way to view uh, the, the notes in the patron's message center, aka this, is to go to other and click on message center. And it takes a little bit of time to load, especially with my internet connection. Um, but this is another way to, you can see and filter and um, you can see who edited a note, um, what time the note was removed, if it's patron visible, et cetera, et cetera. If, if it's deleted or not. Oh, so we have a record that <laughs> Katie's inappropriate in this um, in this log, in this view, um, but it is deleted. So we know then that it's not, um, it's not on their main account. So there are just a few different ways to manage um, these, these notes. Are there questions? Um, if I believe I've gone over everything I wanted to. Um, again, there are these additional columns that you can add uh, if you need to see more information. Note IDs, um, see whether it's deleted, et cetera, et cetera. So that is good. And then also you can, um, like with other columns, you can manage the widths if you need to um, click on manage column widths and then you can make it either larger or smaller. And then you can save to make it Um, that is it for consolidated notes. Um, if anybody has questions, let me know. Speak now. <laughs> I don't see anything yet in chat, but we can give people a couple minutes. Yeah, we'll give the mandatory. How many seconds is it? 30 seconds? That's a minute. A minute. Katie's <laughs> minute of silence. Well, I only, I only do five seconds of silence. And then I think it's you want <laughs> you want to give a minute total, especially if people are typing. Yeah. But I being silent for a full 30 seconds is a little stressful. So yeah, know. that makes that's a little that's a little awkward. Um, while we wait for people to type, I do want to share that the um, retention interval I am looking into further. So um, we'll okay, touch on that one. Awesome. Okay. Um, if anything comes up, you know where to find us. Um, send in a support ticket or email support at sparkpa.org. Um, and we really appreciate you joining us. And we'll see you tomorrow for 
tomorrow's cataloging, right? Yep. Okay. Awesome. We'll see you for then. All right. I'll go ahead and stop the recording here.